In the previous video, we had an introduction to the built-in HTTP module. In this video, let's understand with code how to create a node server with the HTTP module. Step one, we import the module. const HTTP is equal to require node colon HTTP. Step two, we invoke the create server method on the module. HTTP dot create server. Now this method accepts a callback function as its argument. This function in turn receives two arguments, request and response. Now it turns out HTTP module also extends the event emitter class. And the callback function we have specified here is actually a request listener. That is, whenever a request reaches the server, this callback function is executed. The request argument contains information about the incoming request, and we will inspect a few properties on the request object in the upcoming videos. The second argument is the server response and we use it to build the response that has to be sent back to the client. So node will handle the incoming request and we have to write code to send back the response. On the response object, we first invoke the write head method. We specify an argument, which is the HTTP status code. This will be 200 for a successful response. Next, we can end the response with some text. For that, we invoke the end method on the response and pass in a string. Hello world. We have now written code to respond to any incoming request. However, we must also inform our server to listen to any incoming requests. For that, we store the server created using the create server method in a constant. const server is equal to http.createServer. Now, in the next line, on the server constant, we invoke the listen method passing in a port number 3000. You can think of port number as a door number in an apartment with many houses. On a machine, there can be many other servers, but our Node.js server runs on port 3000. Optionally, you can also specify a callback function for when the server starts to listen. Let's add a callback function that logs to the console, server running on port 3000. And that is pretty much it. Now in the terminal, we can run node index. We see the log statement server running on port 3000. But what is important to note though, is that the program doesn't exit. It is now waiting for requests on port 3000. And how do we make a request? Well, we do it from the browser. In the address bar, type localhost colon 3000. Here, localhost refers to our own machine, which is our server, and 3000 is the port number we have specified in our code. Press enter, and we should see hello world being displayed. If you inspect element and open the network tab, refresh, you can have a look at the request and response. It is standard HTTP. With just 10 lines of code, we are able to import the HTTP related code, create a server that listens to requests and responds with some text. It really is this simple to create a server with Node and is a popular example you'll come across when reading about Node.js. Now, although not necessary, it is a good practice to specify the content type of the response. Currently, we are responding plain text, 
So let's add a second argument to write head where we specify content type as text slash plain. If I now restart node index, control C, node index, head to the browser and refresh localhost. In the response headers, we can see content type is text slash plain. Like I already mentioned, the content type header is technically optional, but then you're leaving it up to the browser to essentially guess what type of content you're returning. I would always recommend specifying the content type. All right, let's learn a few more details about the node server in the upcoming videos. But for now, let me quickly summarize what we've learned in this video. First, we imported the built-in HTTP module. Next, we use the create server method to create a server. The method accepts a request listener callback, which gets executed on every request. Node automatically injects the request and response arguments into the callback function. The request object gives us information about the incoming request, whereas the response object is used to send back a response to the client. Finally, we specify that the created server should listen to incoming requests on port 3000. Now, as a small exercise, I want you to log the request object to the console and have a quick look at the key value pairs logged in the terminal. I'm going to warn you though, there is a whole bunch of information that will not make sense to you, but I want you to understand how much information we have access to if we want to use it. Of course, we will learn a bit more about requests and response in the upcoming videos as well. Alright then, thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.